Another Canadian killed by Islamic terrorists. I'm Brian Lilly with the Rebel.media. It happened in the Philippines this time. 68-year-old former Calgary resident John Ridsdale was killed on Monday by the Islamic terror group Abu Sayyaf. They decapitated Ridsdale, threw his head in a plastic bag into the middle of the street on Monday night. This seven months after he was kidnapped, along with Robert Hall, another Canadian, a Norwegian man and a Filipino woman. The initial ask had been for six and a half million dollars for each of the four hostages. That was something that no one was going to pay, at least not legally, at least not up front. In the end, what happened? Why did the negotiations to free Ridsdale and Hall fall apart? We don't know, but we do know that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is stepping forward to declare his outrage. I am outraged by the news that a Canadian citizen, John Ridsdale, held hostage in the Philippines since September 21, 2015, has been killed at the hands of his captors. Canada condemns without reservation the brutality of the hostage takers and this unnecessary death. This was an act of cold-blooded murder, and responsibility rests squarely with the terrorist group who took him hostage. I don't doubt for a moment that the Prime Minister is outraged, and everyone should be. The question is, what is he going to do about it? There's still another Canadian being held hostage. His life is being threatened. Why? Because Abu Sayyaf, a group that has pledged allegiance to ISIS, wants their own... Uh, Muslim home, homeland inside the Philippines. They want a breakaway Islamic Republic in the mostly Roman Catholic nation. They've been doing this sort of thing for decades now, kidnapping people, extorting them, engaging in acts of terrorism, including bombings off of the Philippine islands themselves. What's Canada going to do to stop it? What's Canada going to do to seek retribution? Prime Minister Trudeau says that the safety of Canadians is the government's number one priority. But here we have a, an identifiable group. We know who they are. We know where they are. We know what they are. Is Canada willing to go in and, and seek retribution? We could call it a training mission. We could arm the, the Filipino uh, army or the Filipino police to, to go in with us and take these guys out. That's one way that we could help, but it's not going to happen, is it? It's not going to happen because we say we're outraged. We say that we want to make sure this never happens again, but then we look the other way. We don't get involved. That's especially true under this current government. They don't want to be seen as rocking the boat anywhere. They want to be the world's peacekeepers. Sometimes keeping the peace means doing difficult things. It was more than 200 years ago that the Americans were first dealing with radical Islamists who said it was the duty spelled out in the Quran to make war upon any non-believers where they found them. They were pirates in the Barbary Coast. The Americans decided they were fed up paying ransoms just to be able to get their ships through the Mediterranean, and they put a stop to it by making sure they understood that when you messed with America, there was a price to pay. Is there a price to pay for messing with Canada here? Or is it just going to be that we'll try and negotiate next time, or maybe we'll pay next time? But when the government says that their duty is to keep you safe and they value the lives of all Canadians, I'm not sure we can actually believe that. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more of the Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.